Welcome to Celebrating Act Two Speaks to Dr. Liz Lister. Hey, Dr. Liz, good to see you. Hello, likewise. Uh, Dr. Liz, I have been noticing a lot of advertising for what I think is a new vaccine. I'm not sure. It's for HPV, which is, I know, human papilloma virus. Yes. And as I understand it, that's the cause of cervical cancer. But for me, it seems to me this vaccine is new, or maybe I'm just seeing it for the first time. Is it new? Is this a new thing? It has been around for a couple of decades now. It was approved by the FDA in 2006. So it's coming up on 20 years of really having it deployed. And what you were saying, the HPV, the virus, there are certain, it has subtypes, all right, there, of which there are many. However, there are four in particular that are known to be high risk for causing women to develop cervical cancer. And then there are many other subtypes that are what we call low risk. So those are the ones that contribute to things like genital warts, that, that type of thing. Ah, so okay. yeah, so we're more concerned and the vaccine is specifically aimed at the subtypes that are known to have a very high chance of causing that person if she doesn't get the right follow-up to develop cervical cancer. Yeah. Now that's it's obviously very important and it's been around for a while. Why am I seeing, is there a new development or something? Why am I seeing, maybe it's just me noticing the advertising. That could be, that could be. It is normally aimed at teenagers. Uh, HPV is extremely prevalent among human beings, uh, particularly after becoming sexually active. Most people end up at some point exposed to the virus. And so we like to uh, have kids get vaccinated if at all possible. So it's approved starting at age nine uh, and mostly it says up through age 26. However, Planned Parenthood uh, for uh, among others uh, says it's absolutely fine to give it to women that are even older than 26. And I agree with that. Now is this a, very something? Is this something that's only for women or uh, uh, I'm glad should, boys, should boys get this as well? Boys should get this as well because it reduces the spread and sharing of the virus. So I gave it to my boys. So again, it was approved in 2006. I had my private practice in gynecology at that time in Southern California. And so I was able to get the vaccine for my patients and I made sure my kids got it which was a little bit ahead of the curve. It wasn't really being promoted for boys just yet, but I understood the rationale of re increasing the immunity, so decreasing the chance of harboring the virus mm. after being exposed to it. And so I knew it would be beneficial for my boys to have that as well. So, so HPV uh, is transmitted Th through men as well. Correct. That's exactly right. And it is the primary virus responsible for penile cancer. So right. it's not only cervical cancer. In women, the environment around the cervix and the vagina is warm and moist and very conducive to the virus hanging around and sure. causing problems. Yeah. Uh, so for men who are not circumcised, that can that's the population of men who are more at risk. And the reason they're more at risk is the harboring of the HPV. So that can, so the vaccine can also be really helpful. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, good information. Thank you for updating me. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really amazing. First of all, I think it's amazing. Isn't it amazing to think about an infection that causes cancer? Yes. Oh. Right. Yeah. And so the vaccine, which we know reduces incidence of lots of different infections. So the HPV vaccine has a 78% efficacy in lowering the risk of cervical cancer. That's huge. Wow. Wow. That's absolutely huge. Uh, yeah. So that means out of 100,000 women uh, in a, that were studied, the group that was not given the vaccine had just over eight women who developed cervical cancer. And in those who received the vaccine, it was all the way down to three out of 100,000. Amazing. 
That's yeah. a pretty so good odds. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's a huge, huge reduction and, and highly worth it. It's a little challenging. There are in our climate of uh, being concerned about vaccines. Uh, it's an older vaccine technology. Again, been around a long time. Some people have local reactions to it. Uh, other people shouldn't get vaccines that have certain ingredients in them. Uh, but other than that, I highly recommend it. Uh, even for women, I had a patient in my practice. Uh, she was in her 50s and she had come out of a lifelong relationship and now she was going to be sexually active again. So she really had had minimal exposure to HPV and she mm -hmm. wanted the vaccine. And I agreed with her. And so we gave her the vaccine. Kids can get just two doses, but after the teen years, uh, older adults or young adults and older, uh, three doses for the vaccine mm -hmm. with a few months in between to build up the immunity. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.